Hello YouTube, Reloading Bench back again. What a lovely afternoon in terms of uh, a spicy, delicious, piping hot eggnog latte uh, with organic eggnog from Costco, which tastes like shit and I would never buy again. I'll stick with the Safeway brand or uh, Dairy Gold. The organic stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm just not a fan of overpaying for organic stuff, and it was an overpay. Just got back from the range. Excellent day. Came home, and the Blue Santa had visited us. So we've got two bags and a box. What's funny is each of these bags is heavier than what is in this box. So I think some of this stuff might be Christmas gifts. So, uh, they may be edited out. Some of these are lathe updates, additions, upgrades, updates, upgrades. Uh, I'm going to do the box first. And, uh, some of them are not. Okay, back. Back, back, back. All right, let's, let's just see what is in this big box that didn't probably... Didn't need to be in this big box. Wow, the tape that uh, the rainforest is using is getting uh, getting better. Okay, yes, one of these is a Christmas gift, and one is not. Uh, I will leave the Christmas gift in the box, and this is a live center as opposed to the dead center that we have for the lathe. And this is an M2 and a returnable. I happen to like this particular design per se. Ouchie, ouchie, pointy, pointy, cool stuff. All right, I will put, I was going to say I'll put some foam in there, but uh, they beat me to it. I'll put some additional foam in there because uh, when I show that to you, that's not a whole lot of foam and it doesn't look, it already looks like it's chewed up a bit. So we will throw that off in a corner. 60 degree ball bearing live center for M2. Good stuff. Um, this one, I think, is lathe-related as opposed to Christmas gifts. I'm going to tear open the package and look inside. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, I don't even remember ordering those. Uh, this is lathe stuff. Ah, there's my brass bar. Okay, so this is a brass bar I am going to machine. Ah, I take it back. I do remember ordering uh, ordering these. These are uh, end mills, high-speed uh, high uh, steel uh, end mills. And the reason I order these end mills is because the end mills I have are for wood, and I am going to make... Try to make this again. Uh, obviously, it won't be as wide, but uh, the idea behind this is to make make this, uh, and because it's so much higher, I would mill off the center so that I have two ends that maybe we'll see that touch um, the frame of the carriage slash apron slash whatever so the idea behind this brass bar is to make that using these end mills and then you're probably saying but how uh, and these three pieces tungsten uh, tungsten ceramics metal sheet I don't remember this see the problem ordering on the rainforest is when you order and you stack your orders, uh, some of it's coming from very far away and it takes uh, a longish time, as in weeks. 
So I've had the lathe a couple weeks now. Okay, I know what these are. These are uh, etching, you know, scribing, um, metal scribe. I think I think this is actually it. No, uh, this one's actually very similar. It looks like it's. Yeah, this is actually a uh, center punch, which was not advertised as a center punch because it looks very similar to my center punch that I keep in my uh, tool bag. So uh, this was when I was looking around at prices, it looks like all these are center punches and maybe this one is the actual scribe, but uh, uh, something to... Uh, to scratch metal uh, without having to dedicate this or pull this out of my uh, workbench bag. So that will go back in the workbench. And again, uh, these were what I would call Amazon cheapies. I think the three of them were like 10 bucks. All right, so I know for sure one of these is a Christmas gift. I can feel this, and the other is not. So because it's a big bag, let me get different set of scissors on the bench. Again, uh, doing my Christmas shopping on the keyboard. All right, so this is not the Christmas gift. The other thing is the Christmas gift. Put that away because that gets wrapped and put under the tree. And this, if it's what I think it is, it's going to go with this and these end mills. As I take a sip, mm. Mm. that's good. So this is heavy enough. Boy, I hope it wasn't a return because it looks like all the tape is uh, off. Actually not, and take it back. This this one isn't. So that's maybe a good sign. Okay, this thing is part of one of the things. I don't know if there's anything in there. Okay, so I don't see any instructions. So that means we have to use common sense. Okay, there is nothing in this one. Uh, there is nothing in this one. So that was just bubble wrap. The I don't remember if I told you all uh, before I purchased my lathe. I was looking on Facebook Marketplace, and there was a dude selling a Grizzly G056, which was the lathe end mill combo, an old one like 10 years ago. They made this, and uh, I got the feeling it was a sketchy deal to begin with. And it just got sketchier the more questions I asked and asked about to see the the uh, the picture of the actual item in its current state. Uh, and uh, then I searched on the internet and found out that old boy, assuming he was a male, stole somebody else's picture from 10 years ago. So there, there was my stop flag. Like, oh, we're done. We're the fact that you took somebody else's picture. And, uh, and are using it to sell yours, uh, and I asked you to send me a picture of yours, that's no bueno, so we're, we're all done. So then, but I like the idea of the fact that it had the end mill, uh, because sometimes there's functions you want to do that would be end millish. Ergo, a small milling table that one can attach, maybe, to, uh, I don't know if it'll attach to a tool post uh, or if it has to actually attach uh, to uh, the the bed, uh, the carriage bed. Uh, and I'm probably using the wrong term. Uh, okay, but somebody's hair maybe or thread. So um, I thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool to put this together? Actually, let me let me wipe it. It's a little. 
Um, it's not in the worst condition, and by condition I mean uh, oily, oily, and covered or anything. Um, I will say that uh, I'm moderately impressed with, uh, you know, how it uh, looks and right now feels. Let me, I don't have a whole lot of air left up here. Need to charge that compressor up. And I think I have a newish brush. Some tooling mark. But again, uh, this is some this is some low end stuff. Back to the uh, you know, you get what you pay for. So I didn't pay a lot. Uh, and the idea behind this is to potentially do some of the milling that uh, I was talking about for my homemade carriage stop. Because I had been emailing back and forth with the lathe manufacturer and I have found them to be quite honest reasonably responsive uh, again you you don't get an immediate response um, you get an within 24 and I found for me within 12 hours um, so I, I again don't I don't have any complaints about uh, Vivor support I had them clarify a few things and they did and uh, one of the things I asked was uh, you know, carriage, is a carriage stop available? Uh, the other thing I asked was, do I need a threading dial? And they're like, no, nope, no threading dial for this machine. You use the uh, the chart that's on the on the side of the machine. Yeah, so this should uh, this should do my trick, my my up and down trick for, uh, you know, whatever I'm trying to do in terms of uh, the piece of steel, or in this case, brass, that I want to mill. And I'm going to guess these are going to be metric, so... Yep, let me go get my, my metric versions. So maybe metric, too small, and there we go. Don't want to bleed. Sharp corners. Now, I would think when I get these loose enough, uh, there you can see them starting to move, uh, I'll probably need to oil that so that uh, I can adjust these up or down. There we go. Again, depending on the size of my workpiece. Uh, oh, that's cool. Well, size and or angle of my workpiece. Uh, it's probably going to be easier to just take those out, oil that, clean that out. Uh, and then mount this to uh, to a tool post. So uh, this was like 60 bucks. Uh, again, it was a way for me to tinker with doing some very tiny milling stuff. Uh, uh, do I know how to mill? Nope. So I look at this as you know yet another learning opportunity. So um, this will get adjusted, and uh, we'll see how it works out in terms of how it sits on the. Uh, whether it'll hold it with a tool post or uh, uh, or if I have to put that on the actual bed. So we'll see. Uh, as usual, more to come. And an update. I discovered that with this particular mounting style, I did not purchase 
or no, I needed to purchase, uh, I think it's called a Z-plate. And it's actually a plate that mounts onto here and I believe extends out in order to let the, uh, the mounting plate hang off of that particular bolt. And then you would tighten that down. And the reason you need that is so that this hangs lower because not having that, I decided I would tinker and my tinkering allowed me to use this old block because any of my uh, OXA blocks, uh, quick tool change, uh, they don't work <laughs> because this is too thick. So all I want to do is experiment, run a couple of these and I found that using the bigger diameter was a little rougher, uh, whereas using the smaller diameter gave me a much better cut. Uh, but yeah, for first time milling, uh, I'm okay with this. Hell yes. And had I had that, that little mount so that I could mount it into, because there, there's just no way to get a really tight. In fact, I had to swap out uh, the screws to actually mount that uh, and tighten that down because, uh, you know, it's, it is what it is. But I cleaned this up and, and got these moving, you know, reasonably well. Uh, yeah, it's lower quality. Um, yeah, it's with everything else. It fits the mini lathe. Let's just put it like that. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with this. And uh, the this Z plate will be in uh, sometime next week, which will allow me to uh, lower this so that when I do um, lower this, uh, I'll call it the bed. Um, it, I'll actually need to raise it as opposed to this is as low as I could get it to the to the uh, end mill when it was in the chuck. So um, it, it worked. It just didn't work enough. So I think, uh, you know, I, I'm going to say for the little bit of milling type activity I would ever do like this, um, this should suffice. And I think once I have the correct um, way to lock it into the, um, the apron, then uh, we should be in business. But, uh, as usual, more to come. Well, you know what bags on the bench mean. Uh, this one is from a uh, little machine shop. And it is for a stop. A carriage stop. Not a carriage lock, but a carriage stop. Let me pull out all my... Holy moly. Lots of catalog-y type information in the bag there. Nice and clean, just like all the other Chinesium. So this hopefully will fit my bed. My ways. Boy, that's just not wanting to open. Probably doesn't help that I sliced it off. Holy crap. Hobie Bajoli. Little Machine Shop Carriage Stop Mini Lathe Adjustable includes fine. I always love it when they include fine. Because I don't want ugly. We got oily. We'll use one of my fine clean shop towels. Ooh, that's freaking dripping. So, I I believe I told you that uh, in talking with the Viva folks, who can be hit or miss depending on who's reading the manual that day, hit or miss regarding uh, functionality, features, so I already knew the answer to this one, but I was pinging them anyway. You know, hey, where's the, where's the carriage lock? And they pointed to the top. Uh, one response, they pointed to the top of the the uh, what what I've replaced with the quick change tool post. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that that's the tool post lock. That's not the carriage lock. And then when I said that. They followed up the next day with a uh,
They followed up the next day with another picture pointing to, uh, what's it called? Let me go look. Fifteen, 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 fifteen. They pointed to the automatic feed lever. <laughs> That's when I had some fun with them. I'm like, don't you even know your own equipment? Because that doesn't lock the carriage. <laughs> that, that releases or engages the lead screw. And this, hopefully it will fit. Because I did some eyeball measuring. These, this, these, are two thrust bearing washers i read uh, slash saw videos that some people swear by them some people do not hopefully they're the right size so one on the bottom one on the top and then my tool post lock we'll go there all right that's that for today's deliveries uh, as usual more to come well good evening youtubers reloading bench back to you once again but we are not doing reloading we are doing more unbagging of holiday lathing stuff machine 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 and i can't remember again uh, because things have been ordered over time and coming from other parts of the world uh I'm just making the vids as the stuff shows up. So let me grab a pair of scissors. I know what these are. Uh, as I first started tinkering with the carbide bits, OMG, I was, let's just say I, uh, I tore some of them up. That's probably a polite way of putting it. Because, uh, I don't know, WTF I'm doing. So uh, this is 20 of these carbide CNC processing tools. Uh, Lady Foy, uh, however you pronounce this. So a bunch of carbide tips. Hopefully they fit uh, and I don't run into the, oh, that's not the right size. But as I've said previously, I will only order stuff that has uh, return capability, especially in this lading slash machining space, mini lathe space where I know nothing less than nothing all right this one goes with this box that is going to go back because um, I continue to learn and as I learn I discover that um, maybe some of the stuff I order isn't the right stuff um, but that's part of the learning process and I don't mind that so if you recall I bought the little mini sled. I'll keep this box too because I don't know if this is a keeper. I bought the mini sled. The mini the mini the mini mill vertical vertical table. And then I tried to do my own little well, where does this start? Tried to do my own little janky jank with uh, mounting it thinking that uh, I had all the right pieces and uh, I was wrong seems I'm wrong quite a bit lately with this new hobby uh, but again that's okay because we are learning so this the idea behind this thing that is not open the idea behind this as I grab a towel because it's going to be dripping with the oil, I can see that. Oops, nice machining, it looks like. So the idea behind this wonderful piece of technology is for me to be able to mount into the center post and then obviously this to clamp down. Um, I'll have to see which... Uh, I'm in no hurry to open that because, because I cannot mount this. And the reason I cannot mount this is because in my zest to order this, uh, 
I thought I was ordering one that I could use to mount in a in a tool po tool post holder because they have many different versions of this. But what I needed was the one that doesn't have this particular edge. Could I cut this off? Maybe. Is it worth it? No. So I will uh, order. Oh, that's that's cool. These aren't even. They're not even in all the way. So I have ordered a replacement of this that doesn't have this so I can attach it to this. And hopefully with that drop, kind of like a tow hitch for a, 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 a raised or lifted truck, it will allow the... You know what? I bet these are going to be metrics. Yes, uh, it's an M10. All right, so we'll take this out just so I can, one, clean them, because I found that uh, the threads and the oil and the debris from our folks over across the pond and a little bit of surface rust is less than uh, less than I'd like. Again, all this stuff for the mini lathe is relatively inexpensive. Unfortunately, I'm buying it all at once, which adds up to be uh, painfully painfully costly. All right, so uh, again. That'll be easy to clean out a little bit with some uh, steel wool. Uh, the idea being mount this to that, and that goes on the tool post, and all should be well once I'm able to mount the correct vertical slide to the correct, I think this is called a Z mount. Eh, it looks like a Z. Zorro. All right. So uh, that's it. Uh, I'm expecting the vertical slide soon, and uh, I'll probably uh, show that unboxing as well, unbagging, unboxing, or whatever it turns out to be. But uh, uh, you know the routine. More to come later. All righty, YouTube. You know the routine here. Reloading bench back to you once again. And, you know, I don't know if this is Christmassy or... Uh, machining because it's not from our folks at the rainforest based on the, the packaging or the envelope so I'm not remembering where this one is from oh this this is something that I don't I wasn't expecting until like January So I think it is Amazon, but uh, it, it's not, again, this was, so many things were order and forget it because of availability. Yeah. So I ordered this on a whim because of a video I saw, because I was kind of hoping it was this thing. I saw this on a, uh, as a whim because of some, uh, it's called a floating die set with wooden, with wooden stand. So obviously there's the wooden stand and, uh, let me grab scissors. Excuse me. I'm probably smacking into the camera. I should probably put my scissors in a better place so that I don't have to do that reach Okay, so the idea behind this was to put a... Oh, look at that. That's just gross. That's where it's coming from. It's coming from uh, grossness of overseas. Yeah, I don't even know what that goobery was. But uh, uh, this is to hold a die. Uh, one and a half inch, one inch, and then I 
don't ever recall seeing a three inch, uh, excuse me, three quarter inch die. But again, the whole idea behind this was uh, to put, uh, this looks like half inch, uh, to put uh, either the die in the chuck or in the tailstock chuck uh, to then turn it. And this was less expensive than the equivalent of like one die, uh, which is why I wasn't expecting it. It said uh, mid-January uh, when I ordered it in uh, November. So uh, this one caught me off guard. Um, I think, I hope <laughs> we're coming to the tail end. There, there's been no more purchases, so now it's just stuff trickling in over time uh, here and there. Uh, again, was expecting, am expecting this, so maybe there'll be another video in the next day or so. Uh, more to come later. And welcome to yet another session of uh, upgrades, additions, and unboxing for the Burgeoning Machinist. Good evening, folks. Welcome back. Reloading Bench with you again. And I think this one's all Christmas stuff. We were at the mall over the weekend, uh, basically just walking the mall, not necessarily shopping. And we stopped in to a massage chair store and we're shocked to learn that you know massage chairs cost twenty five hundred to ten thousand dollars and you know we've been in costco and have uh, tried them out and those are only six thousand dollars so they're just crazy expensive um this is a 14 gauge extension cord 14, uh, 14 3 extension cord for the garage. Not really a Christmas gift, more of a, and not really a lathe gift, but just miscellaneous shopping. So, anyway, uh, as we were in the uh, massage chair store, uh, realizing that uh, <laughs> that's not in our future, uh, he, uh, the salesperson, who was a male, so I'm just gonna say he, uh, had a massage gun off in the corner. And I tried that, and I'm like, oh, that felt so good. And it was uh, $2.99, so $300 on sale for $200. And I'm like, what? So, of course, because all this stuff is made in the same place, you know, it's kind of looking like, you know, that. Uh, since all this stuff's made uh, in the same-ish same -ish place, kind of like the mini lathe, uh, I thought, let me go over to the rainforest and see see what they have. And uh, this looks almost exactly like it. Um, but uh, we'll find out once we turn it on and try it. So, uh, great for my, my health condition, my issues, uh, to relieve some of those issues. So we will... So I, I won't call that a Christmassy gift. Maybe I'll call it a Christmassy gift. But um, this was a lot less expensive than $199. So that's cool. All right, back to business. I think this is, I hope it's this, uh, lathe related. So that it would make sense to add this to my... I, I believe I'm finished shopping. It's just you know, waiting for uh, deliveries, unless I find something that uh, I feel I can absolutely not live without this. So, difference in packing, this was this, if you recall, was in, the, in one of these bags in this box. This is coming with, you know, what I would call more packing. Let's maybe do this. Lots of packing. Yeah, that's, uh, so right off the bat, from a packing perspective, I'm going to say better, better job. Essentially, you know, same kind of bag, and uh, same pins, so I'll leave these pins in here because I'll just reuse these pins, because... This one's going back, so there's no reason to double open. 
All right, so let's take a peek at this. And uh, see if this one's any better. Uh, the casting looks, you know, about the same. Uh, I clean this one up. So I'm going to say, you know, I think the same factory produces all of these, honestly. I, I really, I really do. I think the same factory. Yeah, I mean, they look identical. Identical. So, that is very tight, so I will loosen those two, and uh, I will play around with this and mount it to the, uh, the Z-mount. I'll probably come back in and show you the mount, and then maybe show it to you on the press. So, more to come. Hello, YouTube. Reloading Bench back with you once again. For all you hobby machinists and or reloaders and or anything else in between, collectors, enthusiasts, shooters, what else? Can't think of anything. I'm brain dead. So I'm going to say success and failure. Uh, in order to succeed, you probably have to fail a few times. And trust me, I'm having plenty of practice at failing. So, uh... The correct sized vertical milling slide arrived. You saw the Z, this, this Z mount that uh, worked great. So once that was locked in place, um, not perfectly straight, but that doesn't matter because you know you can move uh, on the. Uh, compound slash cross slide you can mount it so it worked uh you know is it high end precision no it's jan it's janky janky uh no question about it you get what you pay for 55 dollars for a hundred dollar solution uh to essentially give me some very minimal milling capabilities on the lathe and considering i don't even know what the f i'm doing on the lathe when it comes to machining, uh, that's a, a pretty good fit. So uh, you had seen previously in uh, in a video, uh, I don't even know if it's published, where I picked up this now chunky, chunky uh, piece of brass. And uh, the project that I was intending on using and experimenting with this was, I'll call it moderate success. You know, I learned uh, you better have some, uh, you know, some other material uh, because when you start cranking this down uh, and this is aluminum uh, you you get marks in your brass so again uh, learning so I cut a couple pieces of aluminum for for future reference and the idea behind this project was to create a carriage lock which uh, was my very first attempt at anything, thinking I could just, you know, because I have an M6 hole in the middle of my carriage, just one hole. Um, guessing it was potentially meant for something like that. So the idea behind that was to, you know, screw this in, bring it up, and lock the bed against the, uh, the carriage. Well, this didn't work. So then I saw on YouTube a dude who essentially did this. I think he had four posts instead of my two um and i think he said they were useless so <laughs> uh, this is a fail and i'll tell you why it's a fail so uh, i picked up this brass block and the idea was to um you know uh, this is what it actually looked like and i then took my end mills and experimented with those and it seemed like the only the, the bigger I went, the worse the cuts were, and I was adjusting speeds and feeds and all that. It's still, you know, 
didn't work good. So uh, the one that ended up working the best was, you know, I would go in, make a cut, come over, down, up, down, and, you know, trying to learn and get in a rhythm. So I would say my, my milling was a, a moderate success. And when I went to take this piece of brass and put it on the bandsaw, my metal cutting bandsaw, it wouldn't even bite. So I ended up having to mill off, you know, this section, which took a lot of time because I was doing it, you know, a little bit of time. Didn't want to put too much bite on there and then F up my machine. Again, still learning. So uh, then I drilled my holes and I did learn to uh, do reasonable uh, cuts or uh, parting with my, uh, at least under brass. And then I was experimenting with sizes and uh, whether this would be press fit or not. Uh, and because it's all vertical and it would be held in like that, you know, that wouldn't matter if they're press fit or they just sit in there or are, are later Loctited. But playing with different part off sizes and uh, that went well. But what didn't go well was I had done all of the milling and then I drilled the hole so that I could tap it. And all of that was very successful, except when I was screwing this in, I was like, why is this so tight? And the reason it's so tight is because the tap is at an angle. I'm like, mother effer. You know, the last, the 11th hour, the last quarter mile, you know, whatever. It's just a mother effer. So, um, this is a no-go. All this work for naught. Uh, but again, good learning. Uh, the brass makes a mess with the milling as opposed to uh, machining on the lathe with, uh, with uh, just the cutter pieces, the cutter tools or the milling tool or the lathe tools as opposed to, um, you know, the end mill bits. So I am stumped because... It seems that, uh, I think the idea is functional. My execution of the idea, not so wonderfully functional. <laughs> so it didn't work. And uh, back to the drawing board. But uh, I would like, you know, I wouldn't think this would be such a hard thing to find uh, or make. And it's proving to be both uh, impossible to find. I don't know where that one piece of brass rolled off to, but it's gone forever. Uh, I don't know why it's so hard to uh, find. I mean, Little Machine Shop has one, one carriage lock. Uh, and the tool got away from me on this one. Created a pretty cool design, though. Um, Little Machine Shop has a really cool carriage lock, but it won't fit my uh, carriage design. Uh, and I can't believe, you know, just as I have trouble believing there's nobody making, you know, little 3D racks for the OXA tool, quick change tool post tools. But, uh, yeah, so somewhat of a success, at least in, you know, finally getting this beast of a, of a monster uh, mounted and, and usable. I mean, it was usable. And it, you know, it didn't, uh, it didn't create havoc, uh, but because I don't have any way of, uh, measuring at a micro level, you know, I don't have a digital readout and, uh, I, I see there's a kit that you can buy that Grizzly makes. Uh, and I think the little machine shop uh, carries it as well for the X and Y axis, um, you know, to give you some idea of what you're doing. Cause right now I'm just eyeballing stuff, but again, I'm not a precision machinist i'm not even a machinist so uh i'm a i'm a heck heck hecky hecky so uh that's probably it for the upgrades and updates i think i've got four or five of them and uh each one gets less and less views because i think people are as tired of it as i am so that is all later good day youtubers reloading bench matthew once again and I have my reloading bench back. 
because uh, it was slowly getting taken over by all my projects, so I decided to do a little holiday arranging. <clears throat> There's stuff over here that still needs to be addressed. There's stuff over there that needs to be addressed, but at least I've got my workspace back. More deliveries. Uh, I don't know that these are laid related or Christmas giphy, so we'll find out here in a minute. Ah, I will say that this is lathish related because I'm so tired of my hands getting raw playing with those little freaking metric hex wrenches just they're just too short they're too short and i'm getting old and uh dropping shit so i decided to add this to the lathe bench this is harbor freight quality from our friends at the rainforest and uh, i don't have issues with harbor freight quality for certain things um, Metric T handles would be one of those things because after all this is cheapesium wherever it came from uh, So these will be a welcome addition Because I would much rather Pick this up. Oh, this one's already come gunked up with with uh, maybe somebody else looks like it's a burn but uh, that's probably not one I'll use a whole lot because that is eight millimeter and this is ten millimeter and the ones that I'll probably use a lot of are what is this six millimeter five and a half Six millimeter. Oh, maybe I will use this gunkied up eight millimeter. Uh, we'll find out. So whatever these fit, hopefully this set of metric T handle hex keys will save my hand. I don't like the fact that that's all fucked up. That is. That is. That looks like used. Like somebody F that up. Mm. Oh well. At the end of the day, you give what you pay for, and that is about the quality of what I paid for. Uh, this, I think this is the other half of my recently acquired die because I'm going to do some cutting. And this is some stainless steel that I will be machining. And last but not least, I cannot remember what this one is or when it was ordered, but this one is actually I'm not sure what this is. Ah, okay. Uh, I think this is too big. Yes, this is going back. That is. Uh, a knurling tool that didn't have a sizing description, but I can tell from the size of the wheel, uh, this is a straight knurling tool, uh, that this is going to be way too big, I think. Another reason, uh, it sucks when they don't give the size of the tool. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a BMF. That going back. That sucks when they don't give the size of the tool. Oh well, enough for now. Hello YouTube, coming to you from the garage atop my aluminium tripod. Reloading bench back with you once again. And we are going to be opening something that will, I really hope puts an end to my oil can saga. My red oil can saga that showed up black multiple times and I'm thinking this might be a red oil can a little four ounce 
red lever pump oiler. Comes in a box, which is more than I can say for the previous. And drum roll, please. It is, it is, it is, <gasps> it's red. It is red. Whoops. And that was the non bendy. Okay, so we have a cute little oiler which looks very similar to my uh, oiler on my bench, but uh, that is a Harbor Freight Cheesy Cheesy. And this is hopefully not a Cheesy Cheesy, uh, as it is an Aries. I don't know that that makes any difference, to be honest, but it is red. It is Lee reloading bench red and that is loose right there so we'll take that out we'll probably uh, let this sit out overnight uh, and hopefully not lose any pieces and my camera just went off I think so I'm not even sure if I'm still recording okay so it reset itself to go to sleep, and I don't remember what that setting is, so I will have to look that up later. All right, I am going to put this back on because I will probably lose that little washer. And I don't remember if my Harbor Freight version of this... has a washer. All I know is the Harbor Freight version, leaky leaky. That never worked right. All right, so here's the Harbor Freight version, which is smaller, actually cuter. I'd prefer this, but let's get a cup. Because the Harbor Freight one never really I'm gonna tap the screen to make sure I'm still recording the Harbor Freight one never really worked correctly uh, kind of looks you can see the the difference in the build quality you know rivet versus screw polished versus not otherwise you know very similar but this one I don't care what I did to it, how much oil I had in it, how little oil I had in it. It just never really worked. I mean, there's a lot of oil in there. Uh, when you see the design, let's we'll compare the designs. All right, we've got this. Okay, so that's a lot shorter. So for the oil to get sucked up in there probably means I need more oil in this one than so this is a, so that's that goes all the way down to the bottom and let's see how much oil I can spill demonstrating my HF version so we'll use this little towel at so in theory there's more than enough oil in there this thing is about a third full which is about there so there should be no problem grabbing oil but there is it does and this thing is notoriously leaky spilly yes so I don't care what I do and you're not supposed to I don't think you're supposed to tilt them but this never seemed to prime and when it did it was never you know just a little bit of so I'm sure there's probably some uh, oil expert out there that will tell me hey Dumas this is what you're doing wrong 
Now this one has both a rubber O-ring and that uh, gaskety type of O-ring. <clears throat> but I've seen online, and I can tell the difference in the in the pump. It's like there's no there's oh. Do, uh, do we have oil there? Yeah, this thing was... It's just flaky. Flaky, flaky. This, this feels like I'm actually pumping something. This feels like... There's just nothing there. There's no resistance. This has... You can feel the resistance resistance so and I've seen pictures online they're like don't do this the correct application is this well if you're oiling something like here how do you point the oiler and do that so but they were also different cans so this particular style didn't have the no message it was more the vertical with the fat round bottom that had that picture four ounce lever one piece steel braided flex hose one piece offset steel nozzle, which would be this. Always wear eye protection. Hmm. All right, so, you know, this has got some oil in it. You know, why it won't, you know, WTF. So if anybody knows the secret to these little oiler cans, why it's halfway in, halfway, halfway there. Come on now. Come on, come on, come on. In any case, hopefully this is a keeper. More so than... What did I do with it? So for those of you who remember or know the story, this was red, showed up, and it's black. So I did my return, and they're like, ah, oh, just keep it. We'll send you a new one. Okay. Thinking that maybe there was a, a, a wrong pick on the... Uh, and I can feel this one, too. There's resistance here that there is not here. There's no resistance. So maybe I'll pour the oil from here into here and see if that works. And then I'll put this one on the bench. And I will bench this one. Haha, <laughs> pun intended. But, uh, yeah, they said keep this. And then I was hoping, oh, cool, they'll send me the correct red one. They never did. They sent me another black one to which, uh, funny enough, uh, today is... Uh, I sent it back uh, two weeks, 15 days ago today. Still don't have my refund. It says they received it, and, they, and it says we'll, we have until December 15th to refund your money, which is in a, in a few. So we'll see how that works out. But, uh, uh, yeah, that didn't get used. Uh, this one may. Hopefully it'll work. This one, again, if anybody knows what the secret is to get that oil, I mean, it got halfway up, and now it looks like it's going maybe downage why there's no what's the secret to get the oil onto the area i need it to be bye i have to ask myself at what point does it make sense to stop uh, unbagging lathe shit because every time i jump online i find that well i can't live without this particular thing that i need for the lathe and I've been thinking about this particular type of item for a long time, uh, a deburring tool. And uh, this just, I'll just say timing was right. This is the right time to finally pick this up. Been needing it for a long time, way before, you know, the machining space. I'll cut that off because I don't want to rip it and tear it. Uh, and I like the fact that it, not only does it come with extra blades, but it comes with a case to hold the extra blades. So... Uh, this will go on the uh, machining bench. Because it'll probably get more use there than anywhere else, but it'll get use everywhere. Uh, even when I was doing the cans for the brush, uh, after I did my stepped drill bit, um, I had to use a file where a deburr would have, a deburr tool would have done great. So, uh, long overdue. And I think another thing that's overdue is a new blade for Christmas. Jeez, what the heck is that made out of? And this is hopefully a floating tap die or a floating, what was it called? 
spring-loaded tap guide. So if you've seen any recent videos, you'll know that on my my lathe carriage lock, I drilled and tapped what I thought was a straight tap hole. And it turned out that when I was mating that with the carriage, uh, it just wouldn't go any tighter because the carriage had a straight hole, but my tapping was at an angle. So I'm hoping that uh, this spring-loaded tap guide will help me center or keep uh, my taps straight the next time I have to uh, tap something. So I'm not going to call this a lathe. God damn, this is some plastic. I don't even think this will cut skin anymore. Holy moly. So uh, I thought this would be cool to uh, add. Again, not, not necessarily a lathe thing, but the, you know, machining the part for the lathe pointed to my deficiency of uh, keeping a line straight. How, how does that suck? Um, so uh, putting this into the drill bit and then putting my tap in there and then tapping with the tap handle should keep things uh, hopefully a little straighter than uh, me just wrenching on it and then wrenching on it at an angle. So uh, that is today's update for goodies that have arrived via some delivery service or another. Take care for now.